Good morning. We're going to talk today about inflammation and its relationship to people that are walking into your door on Monday. Inflammation spans all of the specialties within medicine. So if you're practicing neurology and you have MS patients or patients with migraine headaches, don't necessarily just think about the lesion on the MRI. Think in terms of the inflammatory response. If you're an OBGYN and you have patients complaining of chronic pelvic pain or a pain medicine specialist and you have patients with chronic shoulder, knee, elbow pain, don't necessarily think about the x-ray findings of degenerative disease or a specific type of laboratory test. Think inflammatory response and what steps that you can take to break that inflammatory cycle. This, of course, is an epidemic. Uh, as evidenced by articles that have been written in Time Magazine and other major journals talking about the inflammatory response in diabetes, the inflammatory response in heart disease, the inflammatory response in mental illness. So it spans all of the medical specialties. So this is very important that you understand the mechanism and also understand the drugless prescriptions that you can integrate into your practice and really become an integrative healer. Inflammation, so what is it? A nonspecific response to injury. It activates white blood cells. They in turn produce cytokines, right? We've heard this before. So your body is sort of yin and yang. You have the pro-inflammatory response and you have the anti-inflammatory response going on simultaneously. And so we can look at certain markers of inflammation, which in turn might help you within your practice recognizing that the person has chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia or chronic back and leg pain may in fact have markers of inflammation. If they don't have markers, well then think in terms of the patient's symptomatology, the subjective symptoms that they have. And so are you going to dismiss the patient because they don't have an inflammatory marker or are you going to take the necessary steps to downregulate the inflammatory response and get their bodies healthy again? So what are some of these markers? C-reactive protein, interleukin-6, 10 and 18, MCP1, and TNF-alpha. These are some of the things that we're hearing about, some of the things that some people test for, but there's a definite link between the inflammatory markers and disease. So this research continues to recognize that at the root of the problems of the patients that you're seeing in your office, the majority of these people have chronic inflammatory disease. And they're strongly linked to diabetes, psoriasis, asthma, allergies. So instead of just chasing them with a medication, think in terms of what steps you can take to start the process of downregulating their inflammation and in turn decreasing their symptomatology and starting the process of get them getting well. All we have to do is to take a look at obesity, right? Literally every other kid in the United States is obese. And so the adipocytes, the fat cells, they signal the body and they start producing inflammatory markers to say, I'm obese, help me, do something about this, I'm inflamed. And so what most people do is have another McDonald's, drink a Coca-Cola and have a scoop of ice cream. We need to think in terms of how we can downregulate this process. Ocular inflammation. Are there specific parts of the body that release interleukins that have mediators of inflammation? So if you're practicing ophthalmology, you're practicing family medicine, or you're practicing integrative medicine, that's why you come to the seminars, that's why you come to the conferences to become an integrative healer, well, we know that there's changes that take place in the conjunctiva, cornea, anterior uvea, that's telling us that there's an inflammatory response. The patient might be complaining of blurred vision, diminished vision, cataract formation, macular degeneration, and we know that there's mediators, like calcitonin gene-related peptide, and prostaglandins, that the body is releasing cytokines and inflammatory markers that are telling us, yeah, there's stuff going on in your eye, but is it just going on in the eye or is it going on in the entire body? More than likely going on in the entire body. <clears throat> Diet and inflammation. So if you want to downregulate inflammation, then we have to think in terms of low glycemic diets. <clears throat> Doesn't exactly sound like the American diet laced with high amounts of refined carbohydrates, monosodium glutamate, multiple chemicals, chronically inflaming the body. So that's why we need antioxidants, right? 
and there's a balance between oxidation and antioxidants. But for the most part, Americans find themselves in this constant oxidative process, constantly burning up, inflaming, agitated, irritated, in the brain, brain fog, the inability to focus and concentrate, depression and anxiety, chronic insomnia. So think inflammation about these body parts and how it is that you're going to downregulate it. So we want to go with diets that are low in sugars.